So let's look into the chapter on MPPT solar charge controllers. So MPPT stands for Maximum Power Point Tracking. And what the controller does is that it adjusts, it regulates the voltage in order to achieve the maximum power output from the panel. So it achieves the maximum power output from that panel under the specific conditions, under a certain amount of a radiance, under a certain cell temperature, wind speed, etc. So this is the core value and the core power of the MPPT solar charge controllers. At the same time, it has several other advantages as well. And one of them I want to point out to you because it can also achieve a desired power output from the panel. So if you want to get a certain amount of power out of the panel, which is less than the maximum power output, an MPPT solar charger can do this really well. Now let's go to the whiteboard again and explain this in a more visual way. Right, so we have this graph, we have known, we know by now what it looks like, and we've got the three points on the graph. So imagine that a MPPT solar charge controller at the start of a charging cycle, at the start of the day, will start all the way at the open circuit voltage. So it will have an open circuit situation whereby no current is flowing, but there is a voltage coming from the panel, right? And then what it does, it is it just does what the engineers told it to do, so it will reduce the voltage step by step. And as it is reducing the voltage, the amperage increases, right? Because we understand by now that under certain set of conditions, you will always be somewhere along this graph. You'll always be at a certain point on the yellow line, right? So if you reduce the voltage, then automatically the amperage increases and you start to draw power from the panel. So the MPPT solar charge controller will continue to do this. It will continue to reduce the voltage and then you'll follow this line up towards the maximum power point. So the voltage reduces, the amperage increases, and as a result, the power output from the panel also increases. All right, let him shut up for a second. I just want to explain to you that the content of this video is copied from the complete course of energy systems. If this information is enough for you, great. If you want to learn more and if you want to get access to the complete course, then check the information in the description below. All right, you go out again. And it will continue to do this. So what it's doing is it says, well, if the voltage goes down and the power output goes up, it will continue to decrease the voltage. But now you can see that at a certain point it goes beyond the maximum power point. And as a result, it will notice, well, I'm reducing the voltage, and you can see that you're at a horizontal point in the graph now, so the amperage stays the same. So as a result, the power reduces, right? So then it follows the second set of rules, whereby it says, well, if I would increase the voltage, if the voltage goes up and the power output goes up, it will continue to increase the voltage. And this is the core essence, this is the core operating principle of an MPPT solar charge controller because it tries to achieve the maximum power output, which is the result of voltage times the amperage, by continuously adjusting the voltage and it will try to hoover, it's never stationary, it will try to hoover around that maximum power point. And since it's hoovering around that point, it's also really flexible. So if the irradiance decreases or increases due to somebody walking in front of the panel, or a bird flying over, or just a cloud partially covering the panel, it is really fast in adjusting. It will just follow the IV curve, which is then a new type of IV curve, until it has found the sweet spot again, the maximum power point, and thereby assuring you that it will always get the maximum power output from the panel. It will adjust really rapidly to changing conditions. Now, that's a lot of words, theory, and uh, graphs again. Uh, let's look at a practical example again. So I want to go to the website of Victron Energy. I'm not affiliated. And I want to uh, show you an example here of an MPPT solar charge controller. So here we are, we're on the website. I'm going to products to the third column of solar. And there are the solar charge controllers. And I'm selecting, let's just go to the first one. It doesn't really matter for what I want to explain. It doesn't really matter which we're looking at. So this is the Smart Solar MPPT 7510 and a couple of other variations on that as well. So what I want to show you in this example is a real life MPPT solar charge controller. I want to show you some of the values and some of the turns that we've seen as I was running through the theory and I was assuring you the IV curve, what it's doing as it's trying to uh, hoover around the MPP point, right? So let's go down here. Let's go to the specification sheet, download it. And then let's scroll down a little bit. That's the information I want to show to you. 
So let's look at the first model, the Smart Solar Charge Controller MPPT7510. So the first value we see here is the rated charge current of 10 amps. So this is the maximum amount of power that can be fed from the charge controller towards, towards your load. So if you're charging a battery, if you're powering up an appliance. So this is from the charge controller to the load, not from the solar panel to the charge controller. That's different, right? So 10 amps is the maximum value for this model to be fed from the charge controller towards the load, towards your battery, etc. Then it also indicates the nominal PV power for a 12 volt system, it will be 145 watts. Which kind of makes sense, right? Because if you multiply the 10 amps times a relatively high charging voltage of 14.5, you can see this by the end of the charging stage of a battery, then you get 10 times 14.5, you get 145 watts. Now you can see that there's a node placed here, 1A and 1B. And I want to show you what it says. 1A, if more PV power is connected, the controller will limit the input power. So this is what we just discussed, right? So the MPPT solar charge controller is also able to draw less power from a solar array than what the array could produce, right? Because it says if more PV power is connected. So they're not saying this, but my interpretation of that is uh, that you can connect more PV power than what the charge controller can process, right? You can, my interpretation is, Fingtra doesn't say it, but my interpretation is that you can connect more than 145 watts. Now, it is very likely that there's a limit to it. Uh, Victron doesn't say it, so that would be a nice question for Victron. What is the maximum amount of solar power that you can connect to the solar charge controller? So I just want to explain that. And then the other value, which is also really important, is the maximum PV short circuit current, 13 amps. And it places a note there as well, because if a PV array with a high short circuit current is connected to the system, it may damage the controller. So it will very likely break. So don't do that, that's a very bad plan. And this is actually also applicable, in my opinion, this is also applicable to the maximum uh, photovoltaic open circuit voltage, which is 75 volts for this controller. Now you understand where the 75 and the 10 comes from. So 75 is the maximum open circuit voltage of your PV array, and 10 amps is the maximum amount of amps from the solar charge controller towards the load, towards the battery. And normally you should never ever exceed the open circuit voltage that is specific for a certain charge controller. So don't exceed the 75 volts in any kind of situation. So remember, realize that the open circuit voltage of a panel is also heavily influenced by the cell temperature. Because if, if a module is colder, it will actually produce a higher open circuit voltage. The voltage of a solar panel is higher when the temperature, when the cell temperature is lower. Now let's look at the other option for a solar charge controller, the pulse wave modulation. Now, PWM 